I want to talk about the number 41. Uh, 41 is a number which crops up in Garden of Rama, which when I was a teenage boy was just about my favourite book. I loved Arthur C. Clarke's stuff. He just, he really enjoyed educating in a really subtle way. And so in this book, page 53 I checked, rather randomly we suddenly find that we're doing some, some sort of quadratic mathematics. So as, as a teenage boy, I didn't understand this at all. I, I looked at it, I thought, yeah, that's nice. And part of me wished I could do that, but then I moved on. So what I want to do today is actually take you through this and explain to you what Arthur C. Clarke was talking about and why it is kind of cute. It's the uh, heroine's 41st birthday, and her husband is a mathematics geek and he takes it upon himself to explain to her why 41 is such a magical number. Real people don't talk like this. I work in a maths and physics department, and even the geekiest mathematicians that I know don't actually talk like this. So I, I just want to reassure you that this is, this is uh, fictional work. Um, give it an excerpt. OK, well, therefore, the entire series can generate a simple quadratic expression. Take f equals n squared minus n plus 41, he continued where n is an integer between 0 and 40. That function will generate your entire sequence. Better still, he laughed, consider f equals n squared minus 81 n plus 1681, where n is an integer from 1 to 80. This quadratic formula starts at the tail end of the original series with f equals 1601 and proceeds through the sequence, decreasing order first, then reversing itself at f equals 41 and generates the entire array in increasing order. No. <laughs> Nobody talks like that. But Sorry, I fell asleep. You still going? <laughs> <laughs> as, as a teenager, I, I wanted to be like this. Um, I, I thought that that was really cool. Uh, and so I guess this speaks to me and, and was a part of, again, of why I became a physicist in the first place. Well, James, I'm going to make your dreams come true. <laughs> oh, because, thank you. <laughs> because this is your chance to talk like that and explain that to us. Go OK, on. let's try and make this make some sense. And, we are going to have to do some maths, but bear with me, OK, because I'm going to try and make that maths make sense. OK, so let's start by writing down the equation that they're talking about. And that is a simple quadratic formula, f equals n squared minus n plus 41. OK, now don't be intimidated, because all we're going to do is we're going to say, for any given value of n, what is the value of f? Let's make a table, shall we? So if I put in n equals naught, then I have naught squared minus naught plus 41, which is simply 41. Okay? I put in a value of 1, I have 1 squared, which is 1, minus 1 plus 41, so that's simply 1. If I put in a value of 2, I get 2 squared, that's 2 times 2, it's 4, minus 2 plus 41, that's 43, and so on. I put in 3, and so I get 9, minus 3, that's 6, plus 41, is 47. And exactly as Richard Wakefield was saying in the book, what we're generating here is a sequence of prime numbers. Every number that we get for plugging in a value of n from 0 to 40 is a prime number. Now, if I plug in the value of n of 41, what I get is the value which is 41 times by 41, which is also a rather cute little symmetry to this problem. OK. So you've got this big sequence of prime numbers. Uh-huh, which goes up to, for a value of 40, that goes up to 1,601. OK, so we've skipped a few there. OK, but they're all prime numbers all the way to 1,601. But you're going to show me something cool now, are you? Yeah, I think so. What I'm going to show you is a little something that was first done by Ulam, um, Stanislaw Ulam in 1963 while he was bored sitting in a presentation. And so he began just to scribble away. And I'm going to start with the number 41 in the middle of the page. And I'm going to scribble a spiral of numbers. So the next number is 42, 54, 57. So I'm just making a spiral of numbers. And at the end of that, I'm just going to get to just a couple more here. 60, 61. So what I want to show is how these numbers relate to our original series of numbers generated from the mathematics. Okay, so our first number in the series for n equals 1, we get 
41. And I've put that in the middle. Nice big circle. OK, there you go. Then our second number is 43. Well, I've put that one up here. 47. OK, it's down here. The next number, uh, if I put in n equals 4, the next number I would find would be 53. That's up here. And then we continue and we find 61. 61 is down here, and so on. And so what we're discovering is that all of the prime numbers generated by the quadratic series are found on this diagonal, the lead diagonal, of what we're calling an Ulam spiral. And every number in that series, as you go down, is going to sit along this line here, is it? Every number in the series is going to be on that diagonal line in this spiral. Now, this is neat because we don't need to start with 41. We could start with any number, and I invite you to try and do this at home. Start with any number, 1, for example. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 12, 13. Keep going. Keep going as long as you feel inclined. And then go back with a red pen and just draw a circle around the prime numbers. 3, 5, 7, 13, I missed one at 11. So you develop diagonal lines through the system. And I can draw in other diagonal lines which would be found. And if you keep doing this... But 9's not. 9's not. 9's right? not a prime. No, there will be gaps. Okay, But the fact is that there's this amazing pattern that just emerges out of nature where you see these diagonal lines in clusters. Um, so if you keep doing this for enough numbers, then you end up with huge arrays of diagonal lines, um, which I'd like to show you. Not only on a Cartesian coordinate system where we're building uh, a square spiral, but we could plot them on, uh, for example, uh, an Archimedes spiral, and then you get a fabulous pattern which will look a bit like this. Well, 41 is really sweet because 41 is the biggest number which we can put into our original formula which generates a series of primes. We could have used 11 or 17 or 5 or 3 or 2, and that would generate short series of prime numbers. 41 is the biggest one which generates a series of all prime numbers. So this is why our hero in the book likes this series. He likes it because it generates 40 prime numbers, and then he can make it mirror itself and generate them all backwards if he wants to as well, because he's a clever chap like that. But you couldn't do this with 43? Or? No, absolutely not. This is quite a unique set of numbers that will actually generate these. So it was Euler who first did this in 1772. Uh, so Arthur C. Clarke is being a little bit disingenuous when he claims that it's Richard Wakefield doing it over dinner. Um, but nonetheless, it's still a very, very nice thing. Euler's famous mathematician, the geometrist, going back two centuries. Ulam is the guy who was sitting bored uh, in a seminar one day and decided to write numbers in a spiral, as you do, obviously. Um, but Ulam, Ulam was an interesting chap in his own right. He was part of the Manhattan Project. Um, he holds the patent for the atomic bomb, um, or, or the thermonuclear bomb, um, which is an odd one, because if somebody steals your patent, then you don't need a patent lawyer. Uh, you need a weapons system. <laughs> um, so that always amused me. Um, he also, he was responsible for uh, Project Orion, which was a project to launch spaceships the size of uh, small frigates into space using a small series of nuclear explosions. Um, this was all before they understood about nuclear fallout. Uh, but he wanted to launch uh, spacecrafts with crews of 200 people on board. Um, and actually, Orion is still seen as probably the only way that we have to do interstellar travel on human lifetimes. So he was quite a clever guy. And in his spare time, he drew spirals. If you haven't seen our other video about these spirals and prime numbers that was uploaded around the same time as this one, and you probably already have seen it because you probably came here from that video. Well, if you haven't seen it, there's a link. You can go and check it out. And if you'd like to find out more about James Cluett, how he became a physicist, why, even footage from his PhD Viva, which is something you don't see every day, there's also links for that. Go and have a look.